Hi, I'm Peyton Howell, and I'm presenting Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa. Agrippa was born from a plebeian family and was educated alongside Octavian, where he became close personal friends with the future emperor. And although Agrippa is best remembered for his military intellect and decision making, his building projects and public service are quite commendable as well. Agrippa held many positions throughout his lifetime. He was first tribune of the plebs and was later made praetor by Octavian after the Pyrrhusian War in which he had served as one of Octavian's generals at only 23. As praetor, Agrippa helped protect Italy against the attacks of Sextus Pompey and helped strike a peace between Octavian and Mark Antony. It was during these peace talks that Octavian discovered the news of the deceit of his leading general Salvadinius, leading to his death and paving the way for Agrippa to take over as the number one general in Octavian's army in 40 BC. In 39 BC, Agrippa was appointed governor of Transalpine Gaul, where he fought back against the restless Gallic tribes. While fighting against the Germanic tribes, he became the first general since Julius Caesar to cross the Rhine. But before he could do anything more in Germania, he had to return to Rome to take his place as consul alongside Octavian to prep for their upcoming battles against Sextus Pompey. Pompey had already won several victories against Octavian using his renowned naval warfare, and Octavian desperately needed a victory. Through Agrippa's innovations, including a higher, heavier, thicker warship and an improved type of grapnel that allowed the Roman ships to latch on to Pompey's quicker ships and reel them in so that they could be boarded with Roman soldiers, Rome was able to win two decisive victories at Mylae and Nolicus, effectively ending the conflict with Sextus Pompey. But before long, the relationship between Octavian and Mark Antony soured, resulting in the two fighting to consolidate power in Rome. Thanks to Agrippa, the tides of this battle shifted in Octavian's favor after Agrippa took Methon, Mark Antony's naval headquarters, forcing him to flee to Actium, where he would later be surrounded by Octavian's fleet and his troops forced to surrender as he's fled back to Alexandria in the night. Agrippa was much more than just a man that could win you a military battle. He became Rome's first ever water commissioner in 33 BC, where he went on to renovate several aqueducts and clean out and restore all of Rome's sewers. Also in 33 BC, Agrippa became Aedile, where he was put in charge of Rome's buildings and festivals. Agrippa built 500 fountains, 130 castella, and a pantheon that you see here to commemorate the Battle of Actium. Public events under his Aedile ship were said to be quite the display, as the people who attended them would have tickets to redeem valuable items such as money, clothing, and clothing rained down upon them. Agrippa also worked to promote the arts by giving Roman artisans a stimulus to promote their works in a public exhibition. And through all this, Agrippa paid for most, if not all, of these projects out of his own pocket. Without Agrippa, it would be much harder for Octavian to leave Rome as the city of marble. Some other accomplishments of Agrippa include his writing, which mostly focused on geography. He conducted a complete survey of the empire, which was one of the dreams of Julius Caesar. And he helped establish the standard for a Roman foot by using his own foot and subsequently a Roman mile being 5,000 of those feet. And here are my sources. Thank you very much.